Happy Wednesday, everybody. This is the Phoenix Sports Podcast presented by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button. Leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our channel. I'm your girl. It's Michaela Perkins. That's Sean DePaz. Yo, yo. Um, I know that I almost said it's Friday, but it's actually Thursday. But I'm leaving for vacation tomorrow, so it's basically Friday to me. Like It's I said. Friday for Sean. Um, Sean is leaving us for vacation. So we're doing TPSP on Thursday on this special happy Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> um, TGIT. Yes, TG, TGIT. Yeah, there we go. I like that. <laughs> um, I'm really excited for Sean to go on vacation for multiple reasons, but mostly because <laughs> I get the office to myself and I only have to share with Max. I was going to say, Max is still there. <laughs> I, I, thanks. I'm looking um, forward to getting away from you too, I guess. And also because I get to cat sit that is, for that's Sean. True, that's true, that's true. And I'm so excited <laughs> that he's going to bring his little kitty over to my house and I get to cat sit. I'm freaking stoked about it. Um, hopefully you're okay with leaving me your child while you're gone. I am. I, I don't I wouldn't trust you with much. But with my cat, I feel like you you've proven that you are capable of taking care of a cat. So I, I guess I'll trust you there. Thank you. That is a great compliment. No, if, you were, I if it was if you were giving me a ride to an air, the airport, I don't know if I would trust you there, but. I I will never ever convince any of the people that work with me that I'm a good driver, and it really hurts my because feelings. I've been in a car with you. What do you mean? You Did you die? You? That should not be the bar, Mac. That should not be the bar. I should not. I shouldn't be afraid at any point during a car ride. Listen, I'm a good driver, and you're still intact, so I don't want to hear it. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I do want to hear about, though, is our PHNX party event coming up. It's next Friday. And I am so freaking stoked for this, you guys. We are going to be renting out the entire driving range at the Dobson Ranch Golf Course. And we're also going to be watching the Suns take on the Timberwolves, which I am, for the first time in my life, more excited about golf than I am about basketball. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you guys want to come join us, the ticket prices are on your screen and you can get your tickets by clicking the link in our bio. You do not want to miss this. There's going to be so many fun things happening. There's going to be food, drinks, contest prizes, and more. Our PHNX Suns crew is going to be there as well. So like I said, make sure you click that link in our description to reserve your spot now. And for all of our diehards, check out our Discord because you get a link that you will save money on tickets. It's going to be super fun and I can't wait for this. I'll be there. The whole crew is going to be there. If you need to gear up though, um, Sean. Yes. If you need to gear up, you got to you gotta check out Bad Birdie, the best golf apparel on the planet. That's the the biggest reason I'm looking forward to it is because I'm gonna actually get to show up in my bad birdie and like not look out of place. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm gonna be golfing. I'm gonna get to put on some golf pants, the hat, the whole thing, get the glove. I'm gonna be looking like Tiger, but attractive. <laughs> An attractive An Tiger attractive Woods. Tiger, because Tiger's not out here rocking bad birdie. Uh, if you wanna be more attractive than Tiger Woods, um, and almost as attractive as me. Check out badbirdiegolf.com. Use promo code PHNX underscore sports 15. That's PHNX underscore sports 15 for 15% off your order. So you can look good, feel good, and still probably play bad because that's my plan is to look good. That's okay. If you look at that, it's the only thing that matters. Yeah, no, that's no, my philosophy in yeah. life. As long as I look good, nothing else matters. Right? And there's no no video allowed. No video I allowed. I cannot have any proof that I'm bad at golf. <laughs> Pictures, you could. I could, I'll look good in a still. I will not look good actually swinging a golf club it's okay none of us are really that good yeah. golf show. i also could not hit the broad side of a barn so <laughs> i will not be participating in the golf um well speaking of things that are unfortunate i think we need a temperature check on yeah. what is going on in the valley right now because i am sad i am depressed i am unwell i don't know how to feel other than hopeless <laughs> yeah that's uh hopeless is a good way to put it uh, I feel hopeful. Cardinals specifically are not, made, not not instilling a whole lot of hope in me as a Valley fan. No, yeah, there's not a lot we have going on for us right now that's very positive, of course. It's just so frustrating because we have been through so much as Arizona sports fans that I know I'm preaching to the choir and everyone that's watched this podcast probably already knows what I'm about to say, but... Uh, being an Arizona sports fan sucks sometimes, and <laughs> we are definitely in a period of major suck right now. Um, a period of major suck. I like that. It's the suck era. It's the suck era. We're in our suck era. Yeah. Um, mm. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of already mentioned it. The Cardinals, oh my God, mercifully, thank the Lords above, their Putting season is coming misery. to an end. <laughs> 
They've got one game left, and it's against the 49ers on Sunday, where they are 14-point underdogs, in fact. Uh, Third-string quarterbacks going at it, and I think it says a lot. Fourth-string. This is fourth string for the, oh, the yeah, Cardinals. Oh, yeah, for the Cardinals. It is their fourth string we quarterback. Down Kyler, oh Colt, God. McSorley, and now David Blaine Blau. David Blaine Blau. Um, the fact that it is the backup, uh, it's the battle of the backups, and the Cardinals are so severely... I know there's a lot of other, like, discrepancies on that roster when you look at the 49ers, yeah. specifically the defense, but I think it just says a lot that, you know, the the 49ers have managed to build so much depth and the Cardinals have none of that. <laughs> yeah, they've either built depth or they've built a system where it doesn't really matter who's playing quarterback. And either one is, is better than the situation the Cardinals are in. Um, yeah, like you said, I'm just I'm just excited that this is finally going to be over. We can focus on the draft. Black Monday is coming um, and we can start looking towards the future because at least with the other franchises that suck, there's something to be hopeful about. Mm-hmm. Um can't say that so much for the Cardinals right now, but hopefully within the next week or so that changes. Yes. Speaking of Black Monday, this could be potentially the last time we see Cliff Kingsbury as the head coach <sighs> of the Arizona Cardinals. This is is an issue that is so like di- like divided. Like some people really think that Cliff Kingsbury is going to get fired, and some people are convinced that he is going to be the head coach yeah. next year. Well, so the funny part of it though is that not it's not, no one is sitting here thinking that Cliff should be. The coach next year. It's more the they just don't have faith in Bidwell that he's actually going right, to fire. Yeah, Cliff. I don't think I'm personally among, among the belief that Cliff will be the head coach next year. Because, oh, will? Yes, because oh, wow. I don't think Michael Bidwell can swallow um, an ego check that big and admit that he was wrong by giving Cliff an extension in the off season and then firing him so quickly afterwards. So I'm I don't want, but by all means, I do not want Cliff Kingsbury to be the head coach of this team. I do not think he is the guy to do it, but I don't see a place and time where Michael Bidwell accepts that much defeat, um, especially considering I don't believe that Steve Kime will be back to be the GM um, at all. So I think he's going to take the loss on Steve Kime and then just hold on to Cliff Kingsbury. It's just so that he doesn't have to admit that he was wrong. (laughs) No, I feel like, I feel like Cliff's going to, because if you're getting rid of Kime, you got to admit you're wrong there. You might as well do it all at once and just clean house. I I mean, I agree. I think if you're going to, if Steve Kime is gone, like blow this whole thing up, like blow up the coaching staff, blow up the roster. Like let's just fucking tear it down. Yeah. (laughs) Build it back up again. I feel like if Bidwell is concerned about his, his reputation, his ego, it's, it's better to fire Cliff and actually like be respectable as opposed to holding on to Cliff and everyone thinking you're a joke. Um, just because you didn't want to admit you were wrong. Yeah. Um, I, who, I would be shocked if Cliff is still the coach, even this time next week. So you're in the he will be gone. Yes, camp. I I don't know. There's no way Bidwell's that stupid. You can't. This has been so bad that you you have to you have to. I feel like you have to fire Cliff at this point. I would be I would be genuinely shocked if he was still the coach on uh, Tuesday. I don't know. I just don't have any faith in Bidwell being able That's to admit that he was wrong. Understandable, but especially I mean, Mikey Desert Cardinal brings it up. Sean Payton. If Sean Payton is on the board, I feel like he, Bidwell will he, will put his ego aside for something that will ultimately make him look better. If you can move on from Cliff, who has not won at any level really, to a guy that's proven success, won a Super Bowl in the NFL, um, I feel like people aren't going to be questioning you too much if you make that move. I don't know. I guess we're going to have to see. Let us know in the comments what you think if Cliff will be the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals post Black Monday. Um, this is also the last time we could potentially see DeAndre Hopkins in a yep. Cardinals uniform. Um, obviously, if the Cardinals go in the direction of blowing things up, I don't think D-Hop is going to want to be here. Uh, he is 31 years old. He's kind of, hmm, for a lack of a better term, slowing down a little bit. That knee injury is still yeah. nagging him. He does still have two years left on his contract with the Arizona Cardinals. Um, but he has $30 million towards the cap next year. And if the Cardinals are going to blow it up, I just don't see them wanting to retain that cap hit. Yeah. Um, so, Sean, do you think this is the last time that we see D-Hop in a Cardinals <sighs> uniform? I mean, I, I can't say that I've thought about it too much. Most of my attention has been on Cliff. But I I think it might be. I, I, I think when you're in the Cardinals position... You don't really gain much from having him on the roster because I think it's pretty clear at this point that the championship window uh, is not open. Um, if it ever was, it's it's now closed. Um, and there's teams that are going to they're going to pay to have these two years in his contract. Uh, you look at a team like the Buffalo Bills or or Kansas City Chiefs, like one of these teams that that could use another dominant go get it pass catcher. Yeah. Um, 
I think there's going to be teams that are going to want him. And it goes back to the blow it up thing. You're not you're not going to be in a position to win a championship in the next two years, especially with your star your star quarterback not going to be playing an entire year next year. So at best, you're going to get a year and a half of your completed roster. Um, I I feel like there's just too much to gain by getting rid of him and too little to gain by keeping on holding on to him. Um, so yeah, I do think um, we have seen the last of of D Hop as an Arizona Cardinal. Yeah, I agree. I don't think um, D Hop is going to want to stay around for a rebuild. He still has a lot to do, and this team is not the team to do it with. Yeah. Um, they also did shut down Colt McCoy for the season just to prevent any potential injuries because I'm guessing that they are expecting him to start next year, obviously in the absence of Kyler Murray, who did post yesterday that he had his ACL repair surgery and everything went well. So we are wishing the best for Kyler on his road to recovery. But I think it's an interesting move shutting Colt McCoy down. I think it's a smart move just because obviously – Anything can happen in football, as we've seen this past week, and there's no reason to risk yet another quarterback on your roster when there's no point. Like they're they're not, they're playing for nothing at this point, yeah. um, except possibly maybe a higher draft pick. So there's just no need to put Colt in that situation. Um, I am interested to see though if they do blow it up and they bring someone else. If Colt survives that change, um, because he is a old regime guy. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, I definitely think shutting down Colt was the right call there. Yeah, that was the most interesting thing about what Cliff said, and we have the video um, if we want to run it. It was tough. Yeah, he, he wanted to play, and um, it's just in our situation with, like I said, the impending probably not having Kyler start the year, it's, it's the right thing to do. Yeah, so what fascinated me about that is, like you said, him talking about next year. Yeah. Because... First off, I mean, obviously, he's not going to publicly come out and say that he thinks he's going to get fired. But he's uh, this move is a plan for next year, which does Cliff think he's going to be around? I, I would be surprised if he thought that, unless he has had that conversation already. And also, I didn't really expect Colt to be around. Um, I thought this would probably be the, one of the last times we would see Colt as, a, as an Arizona Cardinal. So I was very interested to hear him say that, um, that. Colt is the plan for next year, which also goes to something I have said about how they should probably go and try and draft a quarterback. Um, it, it seems like their their plan, at least for next year, is is Colt until Kyler. Um, Colt until Kyler. And Let's make I, that a shirt. <laughs> yeah, right. I was I was I was surprised by it. I didn't. That is not the the move that I expected. Um, but like you said, I I'm not positive that Colt is going to be a part of whoever this new regime is. Um, yeah. Especially if you if you get a guy like Sean Payton. Maybe there that is something that Bo and Johnny have brought up. Maybe a guy like Jameis Winston is a guy that you would use as a little bit of a bridge there. Um, there's the familiarity there. So mm -hmm. I, I I was surprised to hear that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, but I did not, uh, prior to hearing this, I did not expect to see Colt in the Cardinals jersey again. Yeah, I definitely understand where you're coming from from there. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm just glad the season is coming to an end because it has been majorly disappointing in every way, shape, and form from every facet I could have ever imagined. I've been disappointed at every single turn. <laughs> yeah. But hey, silver lining, you get the pleasant surprise of having a, a top five draft pick this year. Yeah. Didn't expect that. That's definitely not it. expected. <laughs> um, hopefully, Steve Kai won't be the one making decisions on what to do <laughs> yeah. with those draft picks because we've seen how well that's worked out in the past. Yeah. Um, speaking of picking things, Sean, underdog fantasy, you can pick a lot of things. York, York, York. Yeah, you can pick a whole lot of stuff. You can do, you know, they can either dabble in their pick em game or you can do daily fantasy if, if your fantasy season has been ruined, like both mine and Max have now. Yeah, mine was ruined. Ha. Too. Yeah, it's it was, true. It was a, a fate deferred uh, but you, <sighs> it's okay you i still beat you it's you all did. that's all i care about you did but we're that's both watching the championship about. from the couch um but you don't have to worry about that if you do daily fantasy so check out the underdog fantasy app or you can do their pick them um it's pretty e pretty easy to get started all you have to do is download um the underdog fantasy app or go to underdogfantasy.com use promo code phnx and underdog will match your first deposit up to one hundred dollars um so or as shane likes to say 100 bones the exchange rate is one to one um but either way uh, check out the underdog fantasy app it's one of the best ways to make sports a little more exciting who doesn't love more exciting sports Facts. especially when you have no reason to live as a <laughs> yeah. sports fan yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> when the games aren't fun make them fun um there you go you have to make your own fun here in the valley yeah. uh speaking of making your own fun sons my <laughs> Ooh, lord boy, oh. Boy, oh. what have we done to deserve this sean i'm just beside myself draft the state of DeAndre the sports. Aiden. 
instead of Luka Doncic. The DA curse. Yeah, yeah, I'm beside myself with the state of the sports in this uh, state. It's very disappointing. So yeah. the Suns, they've only won one of their last five since losing Devin Booker to the Nuggets game. Uh, they lost to the Cavs last night in a very disappointing fashion after leading for a majority of that game. Um, and they're currently 20 and 19. So they're barely above 500. They're eighth place in the Western conference. Currently, if the league were to stop to go to the playoffs today, they'd be playing for a play in spot. Um, how the mighty fall, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> how the mighty have fallen indeed. Uh, I just like, I know that there's so many injuries and it's hard to really gauge what this team is made of when, we haven't had a good chance to really get a grasp on what they can accomplish with a healthy roster because their yeah. roster just hasn't been healthy. Yeah. Um, but it's just disappointing because like you've, at least for me, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, I've had this like existential dread <laughs> <laughs> about the Phoenix Suns because I feel like the grasp of the championship around my neck has been like tightening and tightening and tightening. And I'm like suffocating at this point. Like I yeah. feel like there's never going to be a chance for me to catch my breath because at every turn, there just seems to be another disappointment and another thing going wrong. And I just don't know. I don't think we've necessarily hit the point of no return but I'm starting to get very, very scared for the Suns team. And I'm not quite sure that they're going to be able to turn it around this year, which sucks because there's so many external factors. CP3's yeah. contract, like, uh, I just feel like the wheels are falling off the wagon and there's nothing we can do to, like, get the wheels back on. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i kind of there with you. The thing that almost sucks about it is that, like you mentioned, we have not seen the full roster. We haven't seen them move on from Jay Crowder yet. So there's still, like, that little bit of hope that, like, hey... There's still things to change. They're still going to figure it out. Obviously, we haven't seen Cam Johnson for the vast majority of this year. Devin Booker's out. Um, so there's still like that little bit of hope that like, okay, once the roster is healthy, once they make these moves and then we know what the roster is going to look like until the end of the year, maybe they'll figure things out. Um, but no one expected them to be this low in the standings at this point in the year. Um, and I certainly didn't. Um, I didn't. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I was thinking this team was going to run over everybody and get to the finals. I did not think right. they were going to be win the NBA finals this year, but I expected them to at least be in the top four seat, like a top four seed in the West. And that's not what they are right now. Um, so I'm not ready to completely sell the alarms. Cause like I said, stuff still has to change, but yeah, I, I'm right there with you. It is, it is concerning. And especially when you see every other team in the Valley struggle, it seemed like the Suns were the one that added literally like slipped through their fingertips so they were they were right there and so you mm -hmm. still want to hold on to the, the idea that they can do it but oh i don't know that they can i'm yeah. not i'm not confident that they can <clears throat> one more potential roadblock and yep. that's making this whole situation very frustrating is the fact that robert starver who is still the owner of the team majority owner of the team he has a 60 percent stake um he according to brian windhorst at espn um which gerald actually later shared um in a tweet confirmed that according to sources, uh, Sarver still has the power to sign off on trades, um, especially trades that have to do with any deal that is higher than the average player salary. So uh, I hate this. Yeah. I hate this so much because obviously Matt Ishbia has been uh, confirmed to be the next not confirmed, but he plans to buy the team. There still has to be a vote. Um, a process still has to take place in order for him to take control, a majority control of the team. Um, but that isn't going to happen until after the February trade deadline. So that means that Sarver obviously still has this power to veto trades, to sign off on trades, to not sign off on trades. And I don't know about you, Sean, <laughs> but I don't have a lot of faith in this man. Um, and clearly things did not end on amicable terms. Yeah. And there's a lot of hurt feelings. And I would not put it past this man to be a little vindictive and try to take the suns down with him on his way out. That's just me. I'm I'm interested to see what you think about it, no. but I would not be surprised at all if Sarver cooks up some type of um salty stew that he <laughs> <laughs> shares on his yeah. way out. I mean, I don't expect him to get in the way necessarily. Well, I expect him to get in the I don't expect him to do anything specifically to hurt the franchise. But I also don't expect him to do anything to help. I think it's kind of like a lame duck president, right? They they know they're on the way out. Yeah. They don't really have any incentive to help. The the sale has already been like the terms of the sale have already been figured out. All of that kind of stuff. So like, it, he gains nothing by helping these people. And like you said, he probably is a little salty. Whether or not, I mean, obviously, 
he's in the wrong, but it doesn't change the fact that he's still in power. And so he, I, I, I do not think he is going to do anything for the betterment of the, the, the he's not going to be the bigger man here. I don't yeah. think he's going to, he's going to do anything to help, yeah. um, which is unfortunate because going back to what we were just saying about how this roster isn't uh, complete, a part of that is the, the Jay Crowder trade. And if, if mm-hmm. they are not able to do a complete a trade that seriously, even if they get healthy, seriously hurts their chances of making a run for the final. Yeah. The current average player salary is at 10.8 million. Crowder salary is 10.2 million. Um, and the Suns, according to sources, have talks about various multiplayer trades over the yeah. past few p- past few months that would all likely land up land on Sarver's desk. So it seems like there's no route through around Sarver. It all has to go yeah. through Sarver, which is definitely a bummer. I also clarified too, like, is there anything that the league can do to step in to try to get this sale to go through faster? No, nope. it is not happening until after that February 9th trade deadline, which is such a freaking bummer because I just don't have a good feeling about Sarver still having control over something as big as what this team needs in order to be a championship team. And I'm just worried for the Suns. Like uh, they can't, they can't compete for a championship with the roster they currently have. And if Sarver is going to be salty, which we also, we don't know. I'm not saying that he is like, this is all speculation. Um, But if he's going to be petty and he's going to make it hard for the Suns, that's definitely a bummer because at that point there's like their hands are tied. There's nothing this team can do at that point. And I think, you know, I, there was an interesting tweet that came out from PHNX uh, on Twitter. Go follow us. Hmm. PHNX underscore sports. Just kind of asking, like, do you think the Suns championship window is already closed or if it's still open? And a lot of people were on the it's closed bus. Um, many people said that it was closed after they lost to the Bucks in the finals a couple years ago. Um, and they haven't done enough since that point to make sure that they got back to the finals, which I mean, I don't think anyone last year when they had the most wins in the NBA was going to scream the Suns aren't going to make it to the finals. But, you know, it's just been uh, it's been a frustrating couple of years um yeah. and i don't know if there's any way to jam that window back up and keep it open for the suns at this point yeah i'm not uh, i'm not holding out hope it'd be a pleasant little surprise but i'm not holding out hope. you probably get pretty good odds um on them to win the nba finals at this point on the draft sportsbook app though probably um, um i would not be surprised before we get there though i do want to ask you do you have any faith in the suns to hemorrhage this enough to keep them in a place where if Devin Booker comes back and the gods above bless us with a trade that works for this team, they could make it back with and keep the window open. We'll say. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think you just need to make the playoffs. I think if this team's healthy, I, um, amongst the teams that would be in a play in game, I, I wouldn't want to see a, a healthy Suns team in a playing game. And I feel like there's so much parody in the playoffs. I mean, look at what happened with, the Suns last year against the the Pelicans and then obviously the Mavericks like they had to they had to fight in those um so you put the Suns in that position where they're the ones um kind of they're the underdogs I I think the Suns have a, a chance to surprise people in that in that sense so I I definitely think that if they can hold on they there's still a chance um at least to get to the finals I, I feel like the West is so wide open um anybody can beat anybody um so I, I I'm not I'm not ready to completely give up hope. You're not I, punting on the no, season. I still think there is an opportunity. Um because even as bad as things have gone recently, they're still in a playoff spot. They're gonna get healthy, uh, they're gonna get their pieces back, and then hopefully they're gonna do a trade. But even without a trade, I still think this is a, at least a playoff team. And like I said, you get to the playoffs, anything's possible. So I not confident, but I still have hope. Okay, that's okay. We'll we'll end with the still have hope because yes. hope is all you need, right? Um, uh, you were mentioning though, there's some probably some fun things you can do on the DraftKings Sportsbook app with yeah. the Suns and their odds at championships. Uh, have you bet on the Suns recently, Sean? Um, I've been staying away from the Suns. For the record, the Suns are currently plus sixteen hundred to win the NBA Finals with the eighth best odds. So there is pretty good value there. Um, I, that might be my next bet on the DraftKings Sportsbook app is is to bet on on them to win the NBA championship. But um, I've, I've been staying away from them. I like betting on the Clippers a lot. and They're a fun team. Um, and every time I bet on the Celtics, they let me down. So I've, <laughs> I'm, I'm done with them. Yeah, you got when, when you bet, you got to find your, your teams that you trust. Your yeah, that's that you trust. very true. I have already said it many times, but I have three rules in sports betting, and there are three specific teams I won't bet on. Uh, because I just never know what's going to happen on any given night when it comes to those teams. <laughs> so 
great advice. But if you want to get in on the action, download the app now. Sign up with promo code PHNX. Place a $5 pregame Moneyline bet on any NBA team to win their game, and you'll get $150 in free bets if they do. That's promo code PHNX only at the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Mm-mm. All right, Jonathan. Let's round this out with some baseball talk because hey, you and I are some positive both... news, though, kind of. Yeah, it, Ish. sure. Ish. Yeah, it, not Possibly. as negative as the other ones, at the very least. Um, this is true. We, where do you want to start? Should we start with Swanson or should we start with Davies? Um, I feel like let's uh, let's start with Swanson. I guess. Okay. So yesterday, uh, Gambo, everyone knows John Gambadoro at Arizona Sports ninety eight seven, sent out an interesting tweet. Regarding the potential that the Diamondbacks had uh, for signing Dansby Swanson. Um, according to Gambo, they did make him a substantial offer a few weeks ago. The offer was very competitive with what he ended up signing for with the Cubs when he agreed to a seven year, $177 million deal, which is the second largest deal in Chicago Cubs history um which means that the diamondbacks would have been on par with that either in length or in length and money um which i was shocked by i'll be honest sean i was (laughs) like what the actual what yeah i I did not i did not think they were going to be throwing that kind of cash around um yeah but it is so exciting that they were (laughs) willing to especially for a player who I don't know if you know this, was drafted by the Arizona Diamondbacks. First he was overall. First in 2015. overall in 2015. He was a part of this organization. <sighs> so the fact that they're going to spend that much money on a man that they once had is very encouraging to me that they are ready to to actually kind of make moves. A little concerning because it, it gives me the, the like, uh, we're doing this again. We're jumping the See, gun. No, that's again. what I was going to say. I, d- I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear about them wanting to spend money. Don't do that. But this this that's why to me this is a, a perfect situation. You showed that they were willing to spend money, but they didn't ultimately make what I think would have been a dumb decision. Um, well, okay, let's let's be real. Trading Dansby Swanson was the ultimate dumb decision. Well, but Shelby Miller. <laughs> no, I, I never yeah. want to hear that name again. I annex <sighs> that name from your mouth because I will never hear that name again. I'm just kidding. But I mean, come on. Like the first, the dumbest thing Diamondbacks did was trade him in the first place. But then they yeah. want to try to get him back for a boatload of money and a really long time when I don't think they should be spending any money in the first place because hello we have committed to this rebuild and there are players on this roster that I have a lot of faith in Mm -hmm. that would love some of that money who I think deserve some of that money and we're not going to do what we've done in the past and shovel out big deals that don't work out and I'm not saying that it wouldn't have worked out with Dansby obviously Dansby is a great great player who definitely would have contributed to this team offensively but I don't want to shell out money when we're still in the process of committing to this rebuild. Yeah. And I'm also, I don't really have interest in paying for a 35 year old shortstop when this is when his contract is over. It, that part was very interesting to me that they were like first Xander Bogarts talk and now Dansby Swanson. Like I was not, I, it, it was wild to me. I don't understand, and this is something Jacob and I have talked about. Like. Why are why is not every GM, especially one in the D-back situation who has a bunch of young talent, not looking at the Atlanta Braves and being like, that's what I'm gonna do? Because they have figured they've broken the, the game. They've just signed all of their great young players to long team-friendly contracts, and they're all the contracts are gonna be up right at the end of their primes, essentially. I think the oldest one, they're gonna be like 35 when the contract's over. Like that they're, they're it's, it's actually, ridiculous. It's it's actually the start of their prime. So like Acuna's contract will be done when he's 28. Mm. So then you so it it's a win win, right? So the player gets a contract that makes him a lot of money early in his career, which is why he's willing to accept a team friendly contract. But then he also has the guarantee that he can then go get his money at the end of it. So you get a shitload of control for yeah. for for basically nothing. And he still gets the assurance that he gets a big contract when the prime hits. Yeah. Um, so I do. I like. I, they are going to have to spend money eventually. Yeah. They're going to totally. have to go get pitching. They're yes. going to. And they should. They should yeah. spend a shit ton of money, but yes. not right now. <laughs> but they, you're not in the position yet. I feel like you need another season to figure out who you have, yes. where your prospects are going to be able to fit into this franchise, and then fill yep. in the gaps there. Um, and if you are going to spend money this year, spend money on the one thing that kept you out of being a playoff contender, and spend it on the bullpen. You need to fix that Blah, shit. Bleh. 
<laughs> what? Yeah, man. I'm a, I'm of the mindset that you don't spend all that money on a bullpen because I've seen what happens when you spend 110 million. That, <laughs> I've that's, seen that's what happens fair. when you spend 110 million dollars yeah, on a I bullpen. Just you don't need to, to spend explode. that kind of money, <laughs> but if you're going to spend some money, like your focus should be the bullpen. It yes, should not be yes. no. They need to fix the bullpen, but they don't need to spend 110 yes, no, million dollars on a that bullpen. I agree with. Yes. I'm looking at you, Monfort. Yes. Um. So yeah, this whole thing was surprising to me, but I ultimately came away from it being pleasant like pleased with the uh, the fact that they are actually they're not going to be cheap in trying yes. to become a winner yeah they are going to spend money thankfully they just didn't do it the way that they wanted to correct on a short i side. agree i listen for the past year i've had to hear broncos country let's ride <laughs> and i'm retooling it to d-backs country let it ride let just it ride. let it ride let the roster ride just ride it out we'll give it another year we're gonna let it ride for a year and then we're gonna figure it out after that but i don't think you do anything drastic this year which so far they haven't we're gonna talk about davies and we're gonna talk about longoria in a second but just let it ride yeah. just let the roster figure it out and it's gonna be fine there's yes. no need to blow a bunch of money on one person right now because i just Especially don't think right they're now. in the position yeah, yeah. yeah. and also Ugh. like I, I think it's gonna be a good team and i had said i said uh previously that i think this team could end up in the playoffs the trade deadline exists like yeah. if you're going to uh, if you're going to improve this team if you think if you really think you're a winner right now wait until the trade deadline to to prove that you're actually a winner and then go make moves there um because i like yeah like we said i think it's just probably a year too early to be to be making moves like this. Yeah, I agree. Um, thankfully, though, they haven't done anything yet besides make a couple minor moves. Yesterday, it was announced that Zach right-handed pitcher Zach Davies was re-signed for a one-year, five million dollar deal with three million dollars in incentives. Uh, whatever, it's whatever. Like, yeah, he's a serviceable pitcher. They need the back end of your rotation. Yeah, yeah, they need a back end rotation pitcher locked up. So fine, if it's Zach Davies, it's Zach Davies. Who he is a person is a different debate, but we'll have that talk another day. Um, uh, I'm not bothered by this deal. I think it's nice to have a familiar face in the locker yeah. room, I guess. I don't know. I'm not like it's just what it, it is what it is. Like they needed a back ended back end of the rotation pitcher. They have one. So, yay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's this one doesn't really move the needle in either direction for me. It, it is. It's just cool. We have yeah. a rotation. We, we have, have a rotation pitcher starting pitchers. Yay. <laughs> Dope. Meh, like Chris yeah. said, it's very meh. Yeah, um, but it could we'll be take worse it. though. Uh, at least they didn't give more money to Madison. <laughs> That's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> it could be worse. It He's could still be worse. not even the worst pitcher in the rotation. Could always so. be worse. Um, and then obviously they brought in veteran third baseman Evan Longoria on a one-year, four million dollar deal with one million in bonuses. Again. It, Meh. like yeah he's older obviously on the tail end of his career he is basically just an upgraded version of emmanuel rivera who they already have yeah. over there who's probably going to start the year in minors but i mean they had to have someone who could hit lefties because josh rojas cannot yeah. hit a yeah. lefty to save a life yeah uh, so it's cool i mean it's another i feel like the, <laughs> the value for this is more the veteran leadership for all yeah, these young guys sure. this is a, a super experienced player uh, Very respected throughout the yeah, league. Yeah, exactly. A good guy. So I, I feel like that is kind of where the value, a lot of the value comes in. And then, like you mentioned, um, I think it, it, it's it is a marginal, but it is an improvement. And, and for the kind of the third place platoon that they have there, um, and he, he's going to be able to hit lefty. So I, I definitely think it's a good move. I think the team's better because of the signing. Um, but it's another it's another signing where you're able to improve the team without jeopardizing the future in any way um so i i think i think it's i think this is a good move um and also it's cool to have like a name like i, I grow up baseball especially growing up a red sox fan saw a lot of evan Longoria in the al east i'm banning uh, you from talking about the red sox but on now i'm in the west podcast. i'm in the west and i'm a d-backs fan Banned. and i've seen plenty of him here in the we west are not allowed to say that name on this podcast Listen, at i any time. can't I, it is what it is i can't help how i grew up career average of 370 in chase field with an ops over a thousand just saying, maybe he's going to turn into an MVP candidate. That'd be there cool. There you go. Uh, hey, you never no. know with this team. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But um, no, I think it's a cool move. I think it's it's fun uh, for baseball fans just to see a guy that that has been around the league that people know. Um, and then, like I said, the, the veteran leadership I think is invaluable. I feel like um, we're a dumping ground for San Francisco Giants old players. <laughs> First <laughs> I, uh, Madison Bumgarner. Oh God. Well, now Longoria. Like, at least this one, they are not giving a Brinks truck who's to next? for Buster no Posey, reason. Like just. Come on, just give us all your old guys in yeah. San Francisco. We'll take them off your hands. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> At least they aren't paying this guy forever That's and with true. a lot of money. Yeah, let's not ever do that again. Mike Hazen, please. 
Um, well, there you have it. That's our temperature <laughs> check from two ice cold teams to one lukewarm. <laughs> it's a rough time being an Arizona sports fan. It kind of makes me want to take an OGs because, Ooh. oh, geez, OGs, I need to mellow out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's been a rough couple weeks here, and there's <sighs> nothing that can soothe those nerves like a good old OGs. Um, yeah. <laughs> and they got a new flavor they do oh my god i'm so excited about this you guys they you have to check out their new cbd thc happy balance mm. ratio flavor it's strawberries and cream which i'm so excited about because the orange creamsicle is my all-time favorite og's gummy flavor but strawberries and cream sounds mighty enticing and Very i'm enticing. i'm not even kidding you guys i'm going to try this happy balance strawberries and cream og's gummy asap rocky because i need to um i just think strawberries and cream sounds so yummy yeah now strawberries and cream like a strawberries and cream or a strawberry shortcake or a strawberry shortcake ice cream bar like all time desserts in my opinion yeah so you, you add in a little thc a little cbd you know a little Happy balance. Yeah, this is Sign definitely right in my lane. Yeah. I cannot even. I feel like OG's made this just for me, yeah, and I need no. to like hit up their guy and be like, "Thank you so much." Like, I might, I I might so start bad. trying to mix flavors and like cut one in half and get oh. like half orange creamsicle, half strawberries and cream. <laughs> we get don't creative. recommend doing that. Uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> you never know what you'll get when that happens. Yeah, fair enough. Um, the CBD THC ratio does sound quite amazing, but as always, you can find them at your local dispensary. You must be 21 years or older. To enjoy, and while you're at it and you are riding that high, make sure you head over to Mountain Mike's Pizza mm. or deliver it to your house because you shouldn't be driving under the influence of yeah. Yeah. THC Fact. gummies. Be responsible. Um, but good thing Mountain Mike's Pizza delivers because their pizza is amazing. And they delivered some to the office this week. And don't sleep on the wings. Oh, the wings are don't also the wings. really good. Yes. Their food goes crazy. Their food does go crazy. I cannot recommend it enough. Thank you also, Mountain Mike's, for feeding the office this yeah. week. The pizza was, mwah, as always, you can never go wrong with some Mountain Mike's pizza. Um, make sure you check out their locations in Mesa. And they also have a Tucson location. So for all of our peeps down the I-10, check out Mountain Mike's in Tucson. And uh, don't forget they have a lunch buffet, too, which Ooh, is. I love. I'm a sucker for a good buffet. Right. Who doesn't love, love a, good a good little buffet. lunch buffet? Uh, Sean, I am so glad that you are leaving town. Well, and re relax. I, what are we doing? <laughs> is it, I cannot wait I'm glad, to but it's mostly game. because Sean needs a break. I, I do need a break, and I'm excited for it. But yes. Maxine's a little too excited that she's not going to have to be around me. Yes, I'm excited to have one less person in our office. I'm excited to have your cat all to myself for a couple of days. Uh, you're going to Buffalo, right? You're going yeah, back I'm home? Going to, I'm going to Syracuse and Buffalo. There um, you go. I'll be back in... in Good old New York. Well, hopefully the airline industry doesn't spontaneously combust yeah, while you're not in the flying of southwest. Traveling. <laughs> I'm not flying southwest. American on the way there, Delta on the way back. Y'all better there pull through go. for me. Well, you're going to have a good weekend. I'm going to have a good weekend watching your cat. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend as well. Thank you so much for joining us on this random Thursday edition of TPS. You guys are all the best. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, leave us a five star review. It helps us out so much. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And we will definitely see you next Friday at 1230. Bye.